excited for today uh, in general. So I hope this is working. I got an error just now. Hopefully that we're back. Um, there was, there's just a lot of people on the networks. So uh, what we should talk about too, there's an option. I would love to keep doing these live as long as this works. Um, however, if it's better to just do them pre-recorded and post them, it might be higher quality. Um, so let me know in the comments on this video if that's something you guys would prefer. Because uh, I've seen the video that even pixelated still. So um, let me know what you think. My name is Michael Woodside. I'm an animator. Uh, I'm excited because we are kind of at the end of the second week of doing this, um, and we are we have a lot to uh, be thankful for, even after all this time. Uh, I, from doing these classes, have learned how to draw these characters again. Uh, I'm excited to do Flounder today because Flounder is, he was one of my favorite characters growing up. And through time, I've just sort of, I forgot that he was my favorite. And then I'll... Sydney in particular, most recently, and I, let's do this for Sydney. So I was excited to see uh, how he was designed and put together. Um, we're going to be drawing the whole body of Flounder. So uh, it'd be weird to just draw his head and not the fins. So we're going to get the whole Flounder, which is cool. Um, and then uh some some quick normal opening stuff um who this is for this is for anybody who wants to learn how to draw so we have people in classes uh in this class from three years old to i think probably 80. uh so keep up the good work everybody at every age uh we're always trying to learn how to be better um so what we're trying to work on today is uh learning how to draw flounder so if you don't know under, which most people probably don't, um, we will figure it out together. So if you're um, new to drawing and you feel like maybe there's not a, um, maybe there's not uh, any kind of, you're not really good at drawing, you feel like you've never been able to draw, we should be able to do it because we're just basing it. If while you're learning, you get a little upset and you want to throw uh, everybody who posts up um is so excited that they were able to finish the drawing and it turned out a lot better than they thought it would i love that that's true so we're going to work on flounder today and uh, i think we're going to have a good good time so i'll make sure we covered everything um yeah so first things first i'm going to talk about what supplies uh do we have because this is a simple drawing we're going to use a blue pencil for our under drawing it's weird it's right in front of my face yeah and then after that, we're going to um, go over it with a darker regular pencil. So those are the two supplies I use. And then um, also, we're going to wash our hands before. I use hand sanitizer um, because our tools have been locked up and they're dirty. And we use them every day now. So we want to make sure that we clean our hands before we do that. So um, I'll sh I'm going to do that once I switch the camera over. I'm going to do that now. It's always bizarre. I wish there was a better way to do this. But here we are. Okay, so we're focused. I'm going to start the sanitization. Actually, we'll start the music first. Come on. Cool. Hand sanitizer. Clean up. 
Somebody asked, why is it important to do the underdrawing with a different color pencil? Uh, it's not really that important. You can use the same pencil if you like. Um, I think for me, it's just easier to show how uh, the drawing is built. So it actually works better for my teaching of everybody, but you don't have to do that. We have people who draw with crayons. We have people who draw digital apps on their iPad. So you can draw with whatever you like. And draw hands off, wobble around. Great. Okay, so we're gonna take this off. We'll use that later. Okay, so always, always, always at the beginning of our drawing. Ooh, hello. Every time I take some, there we go. Uh, we start with circles. So that's just in order to and arms. So I always put my circle on the page. When we draw Flounder, he's going to be right here in this section. So I'm going to put this here on the left. Hope everyone's having a good Thursday. The weather outside right now is very nice in Los Angeles. It's like 60 degrees probably and very sunny. So I think after this, I'm going to go for a walk, try to get some sun in. Hopefully you guys are going for walks and getting outside. Let's break up the day. So when I do these circles, I'm doing them with my arm moving around, not just my hand and fingers. And those of you who have taken this class before are sick of me talking about this, but I won't stop. Uh, if you watch, my whole arm is moving. And then in order to do that, you move it from your shoulder. And because of that, you get more consistent lines. And so I think it's important to practice that. That's why we're doing it here on the side. Yes. I got a request to do the camera a little more straight on. The problem is it's on a tripod right now and my chair barely fits here. So this is about as straight as I can get it. Cool. Okay, so now that we're warmed up, I'll show you actually real quick here. I'm just gonna outline this circle with my dark pencil. And then even though these are really scratchy circles here, uh, once I do that, then that really helps tell people where to look. We can sort of ignore all these little scratchy lines in between. Hope everyone yesterday was able to check out the How to Draw Sven video that got posted onto the Disney Animation uh, Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. I got to do that recently and it's super fun drawing Sven. He's one of my favorites. I was the Sven animation supervisor for Frozen 2. So he was a lot of fun to work with. So yeah, you can see that I've outlined these different areas and now that helps to find that shape. So let's go ahead and start with the first part of Flounder, which I bet most of you can assume. No, we're focusing again. We're back. Sorry, the camera got weird. Focus on my hand. And then we bring it here. Cool. The first shape we're going to do is a circle. So I'm going to put the circle a little bit on the left-ish side of my page because this tail is going to go out this direction. So I'm going to do the circle about size a very big grapefruit or like a little baby watermelon. These are not official terms. These are just kind of random. So that's my circle. Kind of rough. And I'm just working out the different sides of it to give it a little bit more um, shape. So I'm working light to dark, light to dark. Okay, so uh, we have our helpful tool here that shows which way that flounder will be looking. So this is flounder straight on. Uh, we're going to turn him this direction and then actually a little bit down. So he's going to be a little bit like that. Someone was asking if you use light blue or dark blue. You don't even have to use blue. Um, this blue that I'm using is sort of a medium blue. Um, but you could use whatever you like. Let me turn his head this way. Make it a little bit lower. These are just arc lines to help us know which way the face is turning. I don't know if you guys, during this time that we're all inside, are um, listening to music more. I know that all day. 
And I think that helps make the days feel a little different from each other because it's weird that we're all in the same place all day, every day, right? But you gotta do what you can to make it feel new. Hopefully these drawings give you a sense of accomplishment for the day. Cool, so that is our circle, just using these vertical and horizontal lines to give some shape to him. The first thing I wanna actually start with is the cheek. So the cheek is gonna to connect to the bottom of the body. And I'll do that really roughly over here so I can practice. So it's gonna start here at this center line. I'm gonna go out from the body, a little diagonally down here. And then I'm gonna arc, it's a big line. It's gonna go all the way around to about right there. So if you turned it this way, it would kind of look like a J, right? So we're gonna do that J from here and it's gonna go probably about half a circle down. So if this is our circle, halfway down is about here. I just like doing these little uh, milestones for myself. If you remember yesterday when we were looking at Baymax, we were measuring him by heads. And so since Flander is just ahead, we're just gonna do half a circle down, it'll be the body. So we're gonna start that J here. And you can make it a big fun shape. Big. I'm actually going to make mine a little bit smaller. Someone is asking if I'm at Disney right now or if I'm at my house. I am at my house. Uh, Disney right now is just like most workplaces is closed um, to keep people safe so that we're not too much around each other. Uh, so luckily I have one of these desks at home. So this is my home office. Okay, so that is gonna be his cheek and jaw. And then let's go ahead and just finish off the body. So coming off from the top of the head here, we're gonna arc back this way like that, and then stop the line above this line here. So probably about here, just gonna draw that here. Oh, pushing away from my hand. See it? Okay, and then we're going to finish off the back of the tail. So by doing that, I'm just gonna do a little bump and then connect it to the J that we made here. Yeah, we were hearing yesterday there was a lot of internet connection issues all around because of how many people are using it right now for working from home or uh, doing school from home. So it's kind of affecting the quality of the stream. Hopefully you guys can see it well enough. Good news is all these videos are saved on YouTube later so you can go back and watch them again. Okay, so I like at this point doing the figuring out where the nose is. So the nose usually is about here at the center of the circle. So what it is, the nose is a bit like a, the same shape here, but just smaller. So we're gonna start that here. And then it arcs around. And then it finishes about here. So this is where the mouth corner is gonna be right at the bottom of the circle. I'm just gonna connect that into there. So the original animator for Flanders is a man named Dave Proxima, and he was known as the king of cute. All of his characters had these really cute shapes, and you can see those for sure on Flander. Some other characters that he animated were uh, the Sultan from Aladdin, which has a lot of really cute shapes.
he also animated Miss Potts, which has a lot of similar cuteness. So he's, he's great at this sort of design. So we're going to try to emulate his work today. And then while we're on the nose, I'm going to do a little bump that's just right on top of here. So just a little curve line coming back towards the center. So he's going to have a big open smile. So to do that, we're going to do a straight line that's diagonal from the middle of the nose coming back this way. So that's the back of the mouth. That's the his right side on the left side of the paper. And then from here, we're just going to arc it all the way back up to the mouth corner. Flounder, he's getting there. And then inside the mouth, we're going to do the tongue, which um, if you remember, a lot of times the tongue feels like an M shape. This one is going to be a little bit different. So what we're going to do to start that is we're going to draw a circle really lightly right here. Kind of like an egg turned sideways. And then I'm just going to darken the middle line here so it just arcs up like that. Tongue. And darken this outside. Cool. And then now we're going to do the bottom lip. So the bottom lip, we're going to, it's going to stick out a little bit below the belly. So I'm just going to start that here. And it kind of follows this line around just from here. So before we do the eyes, I think the eyes are probably one of the most complicated shapes here. Um, we're going to do the fins and the tail and then the hair that he has, and then we'll come back to the eyes. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil real quick, give you guys some time to catch up. about halfway back to the body, gonna be about right here. I'm gonna do a line. If you think of it like a big droopy teardrop shape or like a U, it's gonna be like this shape. You see that? So let's go ahead and do that here. So he has his little shoulder we're gonna draw similar to this mouth corner, the little cheek that we put here. Um, it's gonna be, see that's like a little droopy line there. And then from that droopy line to the tip of it, we're just gonna draw straight lines because he has some different colors in here, different color blue. So we're doing two lines that go to the end of the fin. And then we'll use that as color separation later. So we can do the other fin that's on the other side. And since it's behind the belly, we're going to make sure that we don't see the part of the fin that connects to the shoulder. It's just going to come down here, another U shape, and then back up. OK, 
Okay, and now let's go ahead and move on to the tail. We have these shapes in. The tail. You just draw from back here, just goes straight up. Right over there. Like a little slope. Like think of it like a ramp. And then a smaller ramp on the bottom. Like that. And round out the bottom, round out the top, and then connect the two. Rounding out. Then he also has some lines here, like we did for this. There are three lines. So one goes up like that. The other one goes out. Last one goes down. So we're going to rough in where his hair comes in. And it's one big shape that has a couple little shapes on the front. So we're going to lightly draw a line coming from the front, right? This is where the top of the head meets the center line right there. We're going to go a little farther forward and just go out this direction. and then do a big arc up this way. So we're just building in generally where the hair will be and then we'll draw the individual hairs later. So once you have this line up here, then you can just go straight. It's a very straight line that goes back this way. You can draw a straight line. Like that. And then I like putting a little bit of an arc in this one, but this line is just going to connect from here back down to this area. So it's just going to like that. Okay, let's start breaking up the hairs up front. He has a total of three little hairs, and then this is all one big thing. So this first one, we're just going to Take this point here and then do a line back this direction. And then from here, we go right back up to the top. Same thing. Again. And then I like going a little farther back here. that and it's just me up at the very top I'm gonna make an adjustment to my drawing you can do the same if you like from where this line ended up I'm actually gonna forget about this stuff and then just go straight back here. So you'll notice how I'm not really that precious with my underdrawing. That's not, um, it's not meant to be the final. So it's okay if it's different and changed. It's sort of the, uh, that's the process of finding the drawing together. So you can't, don't be mad if, if you have to make adjustments. That's, that's how you do it. That's how you become an animator. So we're gonna do similar color separation lines in the hair from here. So this is gonna be a darker one. And then one more set of here. I'll give you a second to catch up for that. I don't. I work for Disney Animation, so I work on the movies. I worked on, um, started in 2012 on Wreck-It Ralph, 
And then I worked on Frozen and Big Hero 6 and Zootopia, Moana. One of the cool things about working on Moana is that the directors of Moana actually directed Little Mermaid as well. And that film, this film, it's one of the films that made me want, being able to work with those same directors was huge. So nice. Their names are Ron and John Musker. They're called Ron and John because they always do things together. So they're great guys. Okay, so now uh, before we get onto the eyes, he has these stripes on the side of his head. So we're going to do those stripes starting from the circle line that we made already. So we're just going to follow that around. And then we loop it right back up to the top. It's a total, from this angle, we're going to be able to see four of them, like three and a half of these. So let's go ahead and fit those in. Kind of the same. Actually, if you want to have a guideline, maybe just really lightly draw a line from here to the back of the tail. And then we'll know that that's as low as each of those things go because they're all in line. So let's get the second one in there. And the reason why I'm arcing them this way is because if you imagine the fish tail, Flanders tail, is going away from us here. So we're kind of following that all the way down. And they get smaller as they go back because they're getting a little farther away. And this is the half of the other one. Cool. Give you guys a second to catch up because these are all kind of weird shapes. I want to make sure that everyone gets a chance to get them done. So for just so I know, for anybody who's watching live still, I know there's a lot of people that said they wanted to check it out later as the stream gets clear. If you could mention in the comments whether or not you can see this clearly, that'll help me a lot. It's clear when I stop and when a movie gets blurry. That's unfortunate. Okay, I'll stop more often. We're going to do the eyes. I want to make sure you're able to see the eyes, so I'll give you plenty of time to follow along. Okay, so his eyes, if you remember Mickey's eyes, they are, we call those surfboards, rounded surfboards. Liner has pretty similar eyes, actually, so... We're going to do those. They're at an angle here, so this is the center line. I'm going to do the far eye first. So I'm just going to arc up from here, come back towards the middle, but not all the way to the center line, and then start bringing it back. So it's an oval that comes back down to the center line. And when I'm drawing this oval, if you notice, the bottom of the oval, if I drew a straight line up, is over here, and the top of the oval is over here. And that's because it's set back on the sphere of the head. So that's why it's sort of tilted this direction. I'm going to give him, if this is his cheek, we're going to bring this around and kind of give him a little cheek line there too. Imagine this is all connected. And now let's do the other eye. Same thing. Starts here at the bottom of that circle. Let that focus. Okay. 
So before we do this, because if you imagine this is all one shape here that got pushed up. So the, this line is related to this line. Pretty cool. And then this line is related to this line. Actually drop this a little bit lower, just for me. Okay, so Flanders, the top of his eye is a little darker like we normally do. We're just gonna do one side of it though because he's turned in a sideways direction. So we're not gonna darken both the eyes for his design. So he just has like this little that sticks out on both sides or on both eyes towards the left side of your page. Sharpening. Cool. And now I'm going to do the eyeballs inside. So they are they are normally circles, but since they're turned sideways, they're going to be ovals because he's going to be looking up here. So I'm just going to here and then the other one. Both eyes and make sure they feel like they're going in the same direction. Sometimes you get okay. So he has pupils also. I'm gonna draw a little ovals inside there. For all of our younger artists out there, the pupils are the black part of the eyes, and then the other part here that's the color. Like if you have blue eyes or if you have brown eyes, that's called the iris. So we're going to do the pupil like that. And then this other little circle is a highlight. So we're not going to color in that area. And then the last thing I want to add before we start darkening things in is his eyebrows. So he has these little, little baby eyebrows. And then just to show how happy he is, we can add a little line on top here too. That's just shows it's pushing even higher. Just this way so you can see it straight on. All right, it's time to start darkening in some lines. So we're gonna do that. I've said it before, I'll say it forever. I'm on, I'm left, well, I'm right-handed. Oh, sharpen my pencil in my brain. Right-handed, so I'm gonna start on the left side of the drawing so that I don't as I'm drawing. If you're left-handed, you can start with the tail and then push towards the cheek um, and get creative with it. And then there's another thing you can do that you've seen me do before where I, put down a sheet of paper over the lines that I've already drawn so that I don't smush them with my hand. I like rotating the page around so that I can get a consistent stroke with my hand, but you can do that the same on your desk or on your iPad if you're drawing digitally. Um, I'm always rotating the drawing around. I never keep the able. So the lip is in front of the body. We said that earlier, so we want to make sure that we don't Darken this line here. We're going to on the lip. So that shows the lip is poking out forward. Not a lot of characters have the lip overlap their body, but he's a unique design. There's a fish. One of my favorite fish. I had a plastic flounder toy when I was a kid, and I can still remember the smell of it. Crazy. I like drawing the friends of characters. I feel like I do that a lot. Um, so there's a lot of lead characters that we could draw, or um, they're called sidekick characters. That's what Flounder is. Um, he's a friend to Ariel. He's a good friend. He's loyal and uh, doesn't know when to shut his mouth sometimes, but I think we all know people like that. Don't nudge people around you. Hey, no.
hopefully. So John Musker, who was the director of this film, as well as Aladdin and Hercules and Princess and the Frog and Moana, it's a lot of great movies. Uh, he used to do a thing when he was at Disney Animation, he has since retired, but he would do a thing called the Caricature Show, and they've been doing it since the 70s. And that is when all the artists go off and draw each other in really funny poses and kind of accentuating different parts of their faces. And every year on April Fool's Day, they do a caricature show where everyone posts up their drawings and a big party, and everyone gets to walk around and see funny drawings of their friends. So I'm usually pretty excited to do that. And I have a bunch of caricatures I'm waiting to show this year. But however, we're not in the office, so they got to find a new way for us to display them. And I think we'll just do it way back. But that is good, because it gives me more time to do some people that I didn't get to draw yet. So hopefully I can have a bunch this year. Didn't get to do any last year because I was too busy working on Frozen 2. This is some of my favorite animation. It's by Frank Thomas. Of, uh, and so this music is from, from Bambi when he's on the ice. It's just a perfectly drawn really entertaining and relatable it's just beautiful animation I love it it's magic the music helps sell it too because you can kind of hear Bambi trying Thumper helping him up to the little And if you do, his fins are actually transparent, which means you can see, sort of see through them a little bit. So normally we would just draw this next line, continue around to the tail. But since they're transparent, if you want, you can go just really lightly draw a line through here. You can see the body through the fin, and that lets you know that you can sort of see through this. It's a cool little trick. Rules are meant to be broken for a reason, and that's a good reason to do it. So this is a part where I might put the sheet of paper down because I want to do the top of the head here. And it's a big, big long line and it cover everything here with my hand. So I'm gonna use my flounder sheet of paper, just place it over the drawing I've already done. And then connect it. While we're on the body, I'm just gonna do these stripes that are here. Same thing, cover what I've already drawn on. So for anyone wondering, these classes are just um, an idea I had to help pass the time and, and give somebody um, something fun to do while they're holed up. Um, these are weird times for everybody and um, I do feel like just because we're isolated doesn't mean we have to be alone. I've said it before, and I feel like that's my mantra here. Um, so I was lucky enough to be able to do a How to Draw Sven class officially for Disney, but I have a lot of fun with you guys here. So that's why I want to make sure that this works well. So if it's better for everybody that I just pre-record these and then load them up later, then maybe we can um, work with that. It's fun to be able to interact with you guys while we do it. But if it's not clear, then I don't want it to be frustrating. But the goal for this is that we're just having a good time drawing together. And if 
technology is sort of getting in the way. I don't want that to be a problem. So let me know either in these comments or Instagram or somewhere um, what your preference is. And then we'll see what the consensus is. We might try a little bit of both. So I chose this bottom line <clears throat> just so I can keep it consistent. I like this straight that goes to this point. Feels like that's a big floundery thing for me. Certain shapes are characteristic for him. And I think it's, I mean, it's a couple things. It's the cheek, this cheek that pops out. I feel like that is a really consistent shape between the nose and the cheek. And then this big hair piece there. Hair piece is not the right term, but you know what I mean. I'm sure it's real. lines. So I don't think I'm going to color in the yellow part of flounder. I'm just going to color in the blue parts. But feel free to color in yellow. Basically everything else that I don't color is yellow. So let's do the eyes real quick before we're done. So you can see after we do a drawing like this, why it's so important to warm up with circles because there's just a lot of circles that are a part of his design. So I'm gonna color in this innermost circle, the pupil, make that the darkest we can. Pushing down pretty hard on it. And the next part I wanna color in is actually the inside of the mouth. Before I color in the whole mouth, I'm gonna actually from the tongue, just do an arc line here, like that. It's actually kind of hard to see with the reflections. There we go. There we go. Okay, and then from this section, I'm going to color in the back. So this is like the throat. This is going to be the darkest because this goes all the way back and whenever he eats, that's where it goes. So this section here, I'm going to color in all the way, but lighter than the throat. And that's a fun way to get some separation between the two zones. Something fun that I've seen recently is that people have been sending me pictures of the art supplies that they've bought because of these classes, which is cool people realizing they don't have pencils in their house. Um, get pencils, it's fun to draw. Yesterday I was so moved by everyone's drawings that they posted up in honor of um, health service workers. Everyone had posted kind of tagging different hospitals or just with messages of hope. And I hope that made their day. You guys are very nice people. So it's an honor to know you. So I'm coloring in kind of lightly on these fins, and then I'm going to go back in and do color separation where one of the fins is darker, or one of the sections is darker on the fin. And I'm coloring in the same direction so that I can keep it consistent. Um, a lot of times I try to color in the path of the object. So Nothing is a flat object. Everything is representational of a, of a three-dimensional thing. Three-dimensional just means something that's round, like this ball is three-dimensional, and that's why we draw the lines on it so that we can see all of the different um, directions. And so in order to color in the fins, the fins are coming out this direction towards us, this one. So that's the path that I chose here, and this one is coming out that way, so I chose this path. So the middle of these, is the darker section, so I'm just going to go a little darker.
started looking pretty cool. We're going to do the tail now. So the tail is going out this direction. So that's the way I'm going to color it in. Using that same medium tone. I like coloring in the whole tail and then we'll go back in and do the darker sections darker. And then changing the direction that I'm going. So if you haven't yet, um, I'd love to be able to see the drawings that everyone does. You can, for previous drawings you've done, you can always put uh, the hashtag drawing with Woodsy, and that will help me find it. And then um, I always like to share it too. So if you click through my stories each day, then you can see all the drawings that people have sent to me. I love just clicking through that at the end of the night and seeing all the different variations that people have done. And I love seeing all these circles on the side. The videos of that parents take of their kids drawing is adorable. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. I'm, I just feel lucky to be able to be part of you guys' day. So thank you for sending that to me. And if you guys enjoy seeing everyone else's work, that's a good place to find it. Okay, so now we're going to color in this big hair piece. So I'm just going to try to find a direction that feels for a while. So I'm not really following the, the same way. I just want to get the lines in there. It's crazy to me. It is crazy to me that, again, I understand the internet. I'm not, I'm not new at this but then I can draw this in my house in an office. And then seconds later, you guys are posting up pictures uh, having drawn the same thing. It's wild. It's so cool that even in this awkward time that everyone's you know, trying to figure things out, there's still ways that we can connect and be stronger for it. So I am blown away daily by you guys. Gales, sorry. You artists out there. Okay, so I'm coloring this one darker. And then this one darker. So that's why we drew those shapes earlier so that we could find where the um, separations are. And then that helps us while we're coloring. So the coloring stuff that would happen in these films is actually done by um, the ink and paint team. So the ink people would be the ones who would do the final line on the cells. The cells are clear animation. It's like this animation paper, but it's clear, so you can put it over a background. And then every cell had a different drawing on it, and they were painted on the back. So Little Mermaid was actually the last film that used that process of painting on cells. And then every film after that was done digitally. So I think the next film was Rescuers Down Under. And that was digitally painted. And they have been doing that ever since, all the way through to, uh, I believe it was Winnie the Pooh. It's the last 2D animated Disney film. And then every Disney short that's 2D, uh, which is 2D is just a short term for um, paper animation like this, uh, is colored digitally. So these stripes on the back are the same darkness as the darkest part of the fins. So I'm just starting with that and going there. Give that a second to focus for everybody. So I want to color in these eyes. He has blue eyes, so. 
thankfully we have blue. Since we're here, I don't want to, I'm not going to do the whole yellow body. You can do that if you like. I'm going to color in just the tongue though. Tongue is kind of a pinkish color, so I'm just going to use a red and do it lightly. Sign mine down here in the bottom. So whenever I sign a drawing, that means I'm done with it. I did it. Cool. Let's go ahead and move the camera back. We did this right on time today. Okay. Okay. There we go. Cool. So that's it. Thank you for joining. On. Hopefully you could see something. Um, the the stream was choppy for some people. I'm cleaning my hands again here at the end because we just finished drawing. Um, so tomorrow I have an idea for who we're going to draw. It is a little, it's complicated. It's our Friday. It's sort of advanced, but we're going to go, we're going to take it slowly. We're going to figure it out together. Uh, it's just going to be a head. And so, um, we don't need to draw the whole body because it might take us a full hour to do that, but it's going to be a good one. It's one of my favorite characters and a lot of things to talk about. So yeah. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, we, We'll try this again live tomorrow. If it gets weird, then then we'll um, switch to pre-recorded. And somebody asked if we pre-record, will they come up at the same time? They come up at noon. That's normally when we start, 12 o'clock in California time. So that different times everywhere. But uh, that's when we start every time. And uh, if you have any suggestions, you can put them in the comments of the different videos or posts. Um, and I think that's it. So cool. That was a fun drawing to do. It's good to see Flounder again. It's good to see you again. I'll see you one more time tomorrow before we take a break for the weekend. Uh, thank you, Sydney, for the idea to draw this. Um, and remember, remember, just because we're separated doesn't mean we have to be alone. So have a good time. Say hi to your family. Bye. <laughs>